there's something in version 10 that's coming through and uh, Rob is just going to quickly show it here. He'll also be talking about it in the drainage birds of a feather section. Uh, listen, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here this morning. Uh, I have waited a long time to get 2D modeling into 12D. And uh, I have been noted to be just a little bit of a drainage geek, and I kind of admit that. Um, I have been noted to be out in the rain with my uh, camera. And when you start seeing the things that are inside two, uh, 2D modeling and what you can visualize, and I think I can see all this from my desk where it's nice and dry. And I thought, this is too good. It's a good one. Also, I had to wait. I had to wait a long time. Lee titled this conference, Bringing It All Together. And there's no way that I could have possibly started to do all the different things I wanted to do with 2D modeling until a lot of pieces came together. And um, yesterday, Alan gave an introduction to the uh, 12D grid tins. Okay? Well, you'll find out in a moment that a lot of 2D modeling is all about grids. It could never have happened without the grid tins. Um, there's a lot of things in doing the results. And without all the things that were put into timelines by Richard, it couldn't have happened either. And then with all the extra visualization, uh, rendering colors, all those sorts of things, um, all that had to come together first before we could get a uh, truly comprehensive 2D modeling uh, tool inside 12D. So I was pretty happy when it all came together. So what we're going to do here is just take you briefly through um, what we've called our road flow part of 2D modeling, which is essentially the introduction, very basic 2D modeling. And it's the type of 2D modeling that I figured that anyone who has to do any sort of aquaplaning or trying to figure out what sort of rain or flow is going to happen at an intersection or a complicated road junction, it, they're going to be able to use it. So you'll see it's very straightforward. First of all, the input panel. Um, we tried to keep it very simple. Okay? What you have to start with is the extents of your project. How big of an area do you want to model? Okay? The second thing is the cell size. When I explain 2D modeling to people, I say, just imagine an ice cube tray. And you fill up one cell in the center of the ice cube tray. And as it fills up, it flows over the edges to the other adjacent cells. So it works off a grid. So you have to decide that cell size. And if you're going to work on a roadway, about a one meter cell size is about the size you're looking at. Because you want a fair amount of delineation for it. Okay? A roughness. You have to describe how rough the road is, because that affects how quickly the water is going to flow. All right? The rainfall intensity, how hard it's going to rain. Um, we're going to use rainfall on grid for this. What that means is that every cell has the rainfall falling on it, and the 2D model figures out where the water is going to go. So you have to do absolutely no pre-planning of your overland flow paths. Okay? The 2D modeling sorts out the direction, and not only the direction, but the momentum of the water as well. And you'll see more of that. How long you want to run the analysis for? Well, we're just going to do 0.1 of an hour here. Two flow modeling takes a bit of time. Okay? On my computer, I can do about 300,000 cells per second, all right? cell steps per second, which seems like a big number. Um, but if you've got 50,000 cells and you're doing a time step, you know, half a second time step, and you want to run for an hour, that's a lot of cells. All right? So expect a two flow um, analysis to take five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay? It takes a bit of time. And then here's the first time we get to see Alan's uh, two-flow grid tin. All right? So we sample whatever tin you currently have and create a grid tin on the fly so that that can be used and exported in a very highly efficient file format to go across to two-flow. If anybody's, any two-flow modelers here have used it? Yeah, we got you. See, it's a small group. There you go. Well done. Well, we do the, the high-speed XF8, if that means anything to you. Um, very efficient formats. When we worked together with TwoFlow, part of the design was to make sure that we could get data to and from TwoFlow as fast as possible. Okay. Um, gutters and ridge models, essentially they're like brake lines. Um, if you want to accurately model the road crest um, where the water is going to overtop, you want a little more accuracy than just a one meter square. And this helps you with that accuracy. And the same with water flowing down the gutter. You want to make sure you accurately, accurately model the elevations along the gutter. So that's the panel that you fill out in order to get um, road flow to run. Now, what you expect to see when we run our um, road flow is a, oh, I'm glad you can see it better than I can. OK, you can see that that's an animation of it. We'll come back. And you can see, um, especially if you look down to the uh, bottom left-hand corner, 
you can see how the water actually bends around the corner, goes up the side of the road, uh, the intersection, and back down around. So you can actually see the, uh, the momentum of the water and how it moves. Many people probably recognize this as the training data set that we use. And whenever I do my training, I keep talking about, no, no, 1D modeling is good, but if you really want to get a good idea of what's going to happen, you need 2D modeling. And so to be able to show this and say, look, you can see exactly how that road would overtop, where it overtops, is a huge step forward in doing uh, uh, surface modeling. The other thing you get to see is not only the, the uh, flooded elevations and their depths, but you also get to see your velocity vectors. And what you can see there is the velocity vectors as we overtop the uh, roadway in this area up in here. You can see at the intersection. And you can see it continues down the roadway. Okay? So velocity vectors are the next bit. Now switching over to, to 12D, let's take a look at this. If I uh, turn my mouse on, that'll help. There we go. Let's just start at the beginning there, where essentially we start with a normal 12D tin. All right? I think everyone's pretty familiar with that part. The next thing you're going to have to decide is how much of that tin you want to model inside two flows. So you are required to draw a rectangle around it. We've got a lot of restrictions in our early version. You have to put the first corner of the vertex in the bottom left-hand corner. I think we can get over that technical difficulty in the future. But essentially, that's all you do is you draw that rectangle around the area that you want to analyze. The ridges and valleys, the road center lines, essentially, and your gutter lines, those, when they're sent to two flow, once again, uh, accurately model the overtopping of the roadways. And that's why they're important. So that's the data set that you're looking at. To go and run this, if I bring up that panel I mentioned, come down to our two flow, road flow, okay? That's the data that we're looking at, all right? Now, if I hit, hit the run button, um, it is a little bit like watching ice melt, okay? Uh, it will take about 10 minutes to run this one. So I might pass on that, because I don't think I have another 10 minutes to go. But I'll show you the results that we have, okay? To go across to uh, our results controller, and I move across to the 3D visualization of this, okay. what happens is I'll just step back to the beginning here. Okay. You'll notice up here I've got my time step. Okay. And that's four, three, two, one, there we go. So what happens is inside two flow, you can ask for it to be stored every second, every minute. And that allows you to step through and to see um, the flood as it moves through the system. So that's typically the first way you would look at it, is just manually go through the controller to move through the steps to see how it's um, behaving. The other thing I can do is if I switch back over to um, just a straight results view, zoom into this corner here a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm going to switch over and ask to see the velocity vectors. And let me just check my tin is turned on. Two flow results tin. Okay. So the native way in order to see the um, results, that is the two flow grid. You saw the blue there. Now that I've switched it over to the velocities, you can see these velocities as they come around the corners. Now, for me, it's always, I mean, I, I like to see the arrows, and yes, they're pretty, but also they've, they've got to be to an engineering scale. Because if you do plot these out or create PDFs, you want to go and measure them. So right now, they're sitting at uh, one meter equals one meter per second. So each one of those arrows is not only just drawn for the proper direction, but the magnitude is correct as well. So that's essentially what I would expect um, a designer who's concerned about how flow is going to move through an intersection, a roundabout, can get an accurate depiction of the flow, surface flows inside 12D. All right? So that was sort of the first part. The second part that's on there, if I switch back to my yeah, for a moment there, is to start taking a look at the aquaplaning. Now, aquaplaning, when it comes to um, 2D analysis, is an area that's still under a great deal of research. If you were at uh, Owen's talk about um, the current methods, uh, those have been in place for a long time. But as he's mentioned several times, there's not much technical background to them. 2D modeling is going to have a lot of technical background to it. It's been there. But the question of roughnesses over very thin areas is a place that's being um, investigated at the moment. So we, seem, we do plan this will be used a great deal for that type of research. 
So the depths. What you can see here is that's just the uh, colored by depth as the water comes across the roadway um, after a super elevation bend. Okay. And here you can see the exact same thing where that's the, these are the velocity vectors. And what we've done here in the background is you can see the depth contours. Those are one millimeter depth contours. And the way those are created, of course, is that because our results tin is a 12D tin, you can contour it, you can turn on flow arrows, you can, uh, everything you do to the tin is essentially doing with these ones. So it's having it integrated as a 12D element makes it very familiar for everyone to use. You can use your tools like a, a tin height inquire. And if you happen to be looking at velocities, you'd have velocity contours. If you switched over to depths, you'd have depth contours. You switch over to elevation, you'd have elevation contours. So all the tools you're used to using inside 12D. Just do a quick switch back over to that um, hydroplane example. So essentially, if I go back to the start on this one, it's exactly the same idea. What we did for this project, essentially we've got our roadway to start with, okay? And if I move across here to what that road cross section looks like, essentially it's a roadway that's in super elevation, and it comes out of super elevation back into the standard cross falls, and it's in that transition that you start to worry about the hydroplaning. Take a look at that roadway in a 3D view, okay? You can see that... Um, it's got the standard cross fall here. It's a little bit hard to see, but it goes into super elevation. It comes around the corner. And so it's this area here that we're going to have those issues. Okay? This bit of wildness, you, by the way, this is about a 10 times vertical exaggeration on this perspective view. Um, and this area off into the side is just battered away because it's, it's away from the area that we're focusing on. Into the critical area, this is just still a 12D tin. Um, you can see where you've got the super elevation area here. These are just tin arrows, right? These aren't velocity arrows. And you can see how the tin would come across here and back around. This is the area that we're concerned with, all right? Now, I don't have to specifically isolate that one area to analyze. When I go do the um, road analysis, once again, my job is to draw that big rectangle around the section of roadway and say, this is the part that I want to analyze. So, when it comes to start taking a look at the results again, if I go back to my design two flow and back up to my road probe controller, go read those controls. Okay. If I have to step back through a couple steps, so I'm way up at, those are one minute that I'm going to back through. Okay. So, essentially, you can see that just at the start there, this is actually the end of the drain that starts to overflow. Each one of those color bands is one millimeter. Okay, so you can see how now we're just starting to get a little bit deeper there. And that steps through. This is when it really starts to over top over the end. So we're at one, two, three, four, about five to six millimeters there. And then by the time we get the full flow going through there, it's up to about 10 millimeters of uh, depth across this part of the roadway. So you can see that we've got the visualization tools for that. Um, as soon as we come back and look at the plan results again, you've got all of your contours. Um, all I have to do is switch this over to another variable and say that I wanted to look at, say, velocity magnitude instead. Then I could get velocity magnitude contours. All right? And of course, it all uses 12D standard tools, so we can plot these, all, everything you usually do inside 12D. So it was so good to have all these different bits all brought together in order to make the 2D modeling work. The, wait, wait, is that going to start for us? This is just the animation for this. Have we started there? No, it didn't. Switch that one more time. Let's go back and see that inside 12D then. All right. So, we'll finish that. The way we do the animation, if I just switch back over to the 3D, it's always better to see it live anyway. We'll come back to our um, view visualization and move down to our timelines. And we'll go play a timeline. So 
So what you're seeing there is that, let's move this out of the way to see a little bit better. Okay. So you can see how the, the flow is starting to come off the end. There's that stepping through. That's your time clock running there. And so you can see it as it, you get that extra depth moving across the roadway. And so the whole idea of getting these timelines tied into this so that we can see them, it's also free, by the way. I think you, sorry, not, it's also free to move around the system. <laughs> sorry, Lee, I try not to ever use that word. <laughs> I know. The word's free and unrestricted. I've tried to remove from my vocabulary. Um, you can easily move around the screen <laughs> and while the timelines are running, because they are just straight 12D timelines. So every time you've seen Peter Tate and his displays move around the trucks and all those sorts of things, as a matter of fact, we were discussing this morning that we're definitely going to have to have all the vehicles going through the waterways now as well, through Peter's visualization. So that takes us through the, uh, the process. Uh, that was the road flow, all right? And that's the one that I expect that is going to be widely used by road designers because you can see it's very simple to use, um, but it only uses a very small part of the two-flow package and the two-flow interface. So although I've shown you a little bit, um, if anyone is a native two-flow uh, user, you'll have to come to the two-flow session in the drainage, this is the sales pitch, um, to see how the full two-flow interface will work as well. So thank you very much. Right, now with this, TuFlow is a uh, package in Australia, actually written in Brisbane for doing 2D analysis. And uh, the way this will work, the road flow will be a special module in 12D because we believe a lot of people, that's, we keep hearing aquaplaning from the main roads and other people is the most important thing around. So it'll be just a much smaller thing you'll be able to run, just have the uh, road flow, so be able to run it like that without knowing anything about TuFlow at all. So that'll be just an independent... So this particular thing, the road flow we're showing you, will just be a special module, much less in price than the full chew flow, because I think chew flow itself costs about $12,000. Uh, this is going to be fairly reasonably and cheap so that the designers can just run this process fairly quickly. So uh, if it is as important as we've been told by the road authorities and things, I think everyone should be able to get it and run it on every project early on to really see what's going on. Because anyone who's used the other methods of looking at flow lines and things, you just cannot compare to see what's really going on, trying to guess where the flow lines go. Thanks, Rob.